Hi, I'm Jonathan. I'm a Mikabu volunteer. In fact, all the people presenting here today are Mikabu volunteers. Mikabu is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to education and the rescue and adoption of companion birds. We're a virtual organization with no paid staff and no physical location, caring for over 450 birds spread across more than 100 foster homes. We rely on donations to be able to serve the birds, and due to the poor state that many birds arrive in, our veterinary bills average $50,000 a month. That wasn't a misprint or whatever the vocal equivalent is. $50,000 just for essential veterinary care every single month. These costs are so high because often newly rescued birds require medical attention after being neglected for a long time, failing health, accidents for escape, or injury from other animals and pets. So if you're able to help, please consider donating. And if you're looking to adopt a forever bird friend, you're in the right place. Okay, end of infomercial. Let's talk about the adoption and foster process. Since we're an all-volunteer organization, and because we want to be really careful about the well-being of the birds, the process can take a while, and it's important to know that up front. It's not like you go to the shelter, pick out a dog, go home with the dog. It takes several weeks to get through the process because it is multi-stage. And we want to ensure that we get to know you and your situation, review what we learn carefully, and help you make an educated decision about what kind of bird is right for you. It can take eight to 10 weeks, sometimes longer for a bigger bird. Please be patient. The results are worth it. And if you feel like you haven't heard from us, do ping us. Sometimes things accidentally drop and the reminders are welcome and helpful. We're hoping that one of the birds we'll be showing today is going to be the perfect fit for you. I'll be introducing you to them one at a time, but as we go along, please don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have either through the Q&A tab in Zoom or by commenting on the live stream on Facebook. Today, we'll be meeting some of our Mikabu birds who are seeking forever homes. In order, we will meet Poncho the African Gray, Kia the Senegal Parrot, Professor Lollipop the Cape Parrot, Oscar the Amazon, and Lulu the Lovebird. We'll talk about the approval process to foster or adopt a bird while we spotlight our first bird today. And I'll introduce a bird and their foster so you can learn more about them. Hey, Sophia. I'm going to talk a little bit before we start talking about Poncho. I want to run our viewers through Mikabu's adoption process. Okay. If you haven't, if you haven't already adopt, been approved to foster or adopt, this is where you, you start. Hey, Poncho. First, you'll need to go through our approvals process in order to ensure that you're fully prepared to bring a bird home. If you've already adopted or fostered for Mikabu, then you've done this already, you're approved, and you can skip ahead. The first step is to attend our basic bird class. Birds are complex creatures with needs that are completely different from those of a cat or dog. They have their own body language, their own physical needs, even their own vets. We cover all of this in our basic bird class, which is free and held online every two to three weeks over Zoom. From there, you'll fill out an application and be matched with a phone screener. This conversation will take around an hour and it will help us better understand what you're looking for in a bird and your knowledge of birds and bird care after you've taken that basic bird class. It's also a great chance for you to ask any questions you might have after the class. What a good looking guy he is. Once the, home, the phone screen is complete, the next step is a home visit. This can be done as an in-person visit where a Mikubu volunteer will visit your home or sometimes it's done instead online by a Zoom or other software. Regardless of how it's done, the purpose is the same. It's a way for us to identify potential dangers in your home, help you figure out ways to mitigate them, things like helping you find a good place for a cage and get to know anyone who'll be caring for the bird. If you have birds already, we'll want to see your current birds, cages you might have, and we're only interested in the parts of the house where the bird will be. This isn't a white glove test. We don't mind a little mess. And we don't need to see bedrooms or other places where the bird won't ever be. This is all about the bird and getting them fitting into your home. 
Once the home visit is over, the entire package is sent off to our approvals board for review. When you're approved, the coordinator for your first choice species will reach out to chat with you, letting you know that you've been approved and working with you to find a good match for you. Then comes the fun part, meeting the birds and finding the one that's perfect for you. So with all that said, let's talk about poncho. It's beautiful African gray. And I want to remind our viewers they can ask questions about African gray ponchos in general or ponchos specifically in the Q&A. And either our support volunteers will answer there or I'll take the question here. So poncho is a very fully feathered African gray. He looks like he's in great shape. Um, how old is he? Uh, poncho is 18 years old. And that's not particularly old for a gray, they can easily, they can live 60 years or more. Um, we know exactly how old he is. Oh, he loves that foraging toy. How did he come to Mikabu? He came to Mikabu because he outlived his owner and he's only had one owner. Sadly, that outliving their owner is a, a common issue with birds because they live such long lives. Um, and and they grieve the loss of their owners. So he's 18. Um, does he have any special care needs? No, he's or is a he very, generally healthy. He's a healthy boy. He's his feathers are gorgeous. He's very healthy, and he was much much adored by his owner. Does he seem to have a preference for men or women? Have you noticed? Nope he likes he likes men and women. He likes humans, and he loves attention. Nice. That sounds like a, a, we'll talk more about them. Um, one of our viewers is asking, would Poncho do well in a house with two other African greys? How does he do with other birds? Yes, I imagine he'd do well. I have um, several birds here, not African greys, but other birds. And uh, he's fine with them. I mean, I think it's always good for them to have the stimulation of another bird or in the home. Um, yeah. My, one of my Amazons is extremely social, like too social. And she's gone, walked across the floor and gone over to his cage. And he, he tolerates her. I mean, he'll like peck in the air, but he's not aggressive or anything. And she's a bird who, as soon as you peck in the air, she backs off, you know? So she's okay with other birds. Nice. Um, but he's not mean to her or anything. And at one time, his owner did have several other birds living with him. So he's lived around other birds. Okay. And greys generally do well together. Of course, you need to make sure that they're not in a position to breed. Um, so he had one owner. How socialized is he? Does he step up and, or does he appear frightened of people or does he like attention? I think you said he, he kind of likes attention. He loves attention and he's used to a lot of it. He hasn't stepped up for me. I just offer my hand and he doesn't seem interested. Um, he did at one time step up for his owner. Um, and he he's very treat motivated. So I think he would be easy, uh, fairly easy to train uh, to step up at some point. But uh, I just have several birds and I haven't spent time doing it. And I've only had him since I think the middle of February. Right. That's not very long. And uh, yeah, grays, parrots are extremely smart and motivated parrot can learn a lot, a lot of things. Um, do we know if he's been, he's been around other birds? Has he been around other pets? Um, I don't think that his owner had any other pets, but I do have a very small dog that, um, I do have a very small dog that goes around and eats bird food off the ground, five pound chihuahua mix. He doesn't seem bothered by that. Uh, he was playing with a foraging toy. Does he like puzzle toys and foraging toys? And tell us about that. Yes, he is extremely smart. And it actually, he's just a lot of fun to have around. So I will, you can make foraging toys, but I like buying foraging toys. And when they come, I get so excited because I want to see how long it takes him to uh, to take them apart, you know, to, to figure them out. And he's very yeah, yeah. good at it. And uh you know, some birds don't like certain foraging toys, but since I have other birds, I always have the opportunity to move them around to other birds and keep them engaged. He loves to chew cardboard. He loves to chew 
like um, my parents get this road scholar magazine thing about trips and I'll, I weave it between the bars and he just shreds it to bits. He loves that. Um, the recreation guide that comes from the city. He just uh, took that one out. Um, his owner would, when they got mail, he would say to Poncho, mail call. And Poncho gets all excited because anything that comes in the mail to residents or occupants or other junk mail, he'd say, it's for you, Poncho. And Poncho would, you know, chew off the corners and chew it to bits. And it was really, he loves it. He gets very excited. That's a, that's a great game. And it's great for uh, his next owner to know about that and, and things that are fun for Poncho. Um, what should his new family know about handling him or being with him? So he, so he's used to, in the last few years of his life, which was the last four years or so, when his owner became ill, he didn't come out of the cage much, um, but he interacted with him through the bars. So he is used to having his beak rubbed and his feet touched, and he will make kissy sounds uh, to you. Um, Does he it, talk? He, he says corn when he wants a treat. He says, all right, then. And mostly he does sounds. He does amazingly, amazing whistling sounds and uh like whole songs and uh very cute i mean he just he his cage was right by the couch and he was pretty much always with his owner and his owner absolutely adored him um and when he became ill he had to let several of his birds go but he kept uh poncho until the very end because poncho was his favorite He sounds like a really sweet and wonderful bird, and um, you know a lot of a lot of our rescue birds come in with a lot of trauma, and as well as grief. And he sounds like he's only got the grief and not so much trauma. Although yeah. it'll probably take work for him to feel comfortable coming out of his cage more. Oh, he um, comes right out. That thing because I've had other birds be cage bound. As soon as I open it up, he's out. And he loves to hang out on top and flap his wings. And uh, he's so far, he's really easy because he doesn't leave his cage. He doesn't get down on the ground and crawl around. So far, he just stays on top of his cage and hangs out, which is really easy. That can change. I mean, I have had Amazon fosters that for six weeks were simple and stayed on their cage so they could pretty much be out all day if I was home. But then after six weeks, they started walking around on the floor and chewing up everything in sight. So you do have to watch them. But um, so far, he may never do that. Um, the friend, his owner passed away when I picked him up. But the um, his owner's friend was taking care of him for a few months before Mikabu took him in. And he said he had never seen him walk on the floor before or leave his cage. He did exactly what I'm seeing, which is flap his wings, which is really great exercise for him. But he holds on with his feet so he doesn't fly away. I have a gray who, who sounds very similar to that. So what's a day like with Poncho? So he does get covered at night. So in the morning when I get up um, and things start stirring, I don't wake him up initially. I kind of wake till he says corn. And when he says corn, he gets uh, some sliced banana and uh, he gets uncovered. And then he had kind of a, a routine where in the morning he'd get a piece of Dave's all seed toast, you know, just toasted bread, a little corner of it. After his banana, he gets that. <laughs> and then at lunchtime, he would get a slice of apple. And then in the evenings after he's been out and I want him to go back in, I'll put some uh, pistachios in his dish and he goes right in. He loves, uh, you know, unsalted pistachios in the shell. So in our last few minutes, what else would you want potential adopters to know about Poncho? Well, he is a really special bird. He's a lot of fun. And I think he'd be very easy to train because he, he'll take a treat from your hand um, very nicely. You know, he's not an over, he's not, I mean, he can, uh, obviously any bird can bite, but he is not an aggressive uh, bird. I would not call him aggressive at all. But just a healthy, fun that boy. Great. great. That sounds. He sounds really 
really wonderful. Um, so let's quickly review the adoption steps, hopefully with a slide on screen so everything is nice and clear. Um, here comes the slide. And if not, uh, I'll just walk you through it. First, you take the basic bird class. That's one. That'll take an afternoon. And we do request that you do the whole thing. You submit an application. That's two. That's online. After your application is received, you'll have a phone screen, a conversation with a Mikaboo volunteer. And after that, we'll schedule a home visit, either virtually or in person. Look at that. Basic bird class application, phone screen visit, and then be matched with a bird. A very cute pair of conures, just getting very excited about the whole process. Thanks very much, Sarah. We're going to move to our next bird. We're gonna go a little bit out of order um, because we're flexible that way. And we're gonna to talk to Jen about Oscar, the yellow naped Amazon. Hi. Hey, Jen. Hey, Oscar, look at you. So Oscar's a yellow nape. You can see the back of his head is, there's that yellow patch. I want to remind people that they can ask questions about Oscar or about Amazon parrots in general in the Q&A. So how old is Oscar? Do we know? Oscar is about 50 years old. Um, life expectancy is about anywhere from 60 to 80, typically. So he's not a spring chicken, but he's not not at the end of his lifespan. He looks very healthy. Mm -hmm. um, talk, tell us how he came to Mikabu and how his health is. His health is is very good. Um, he came to Mikabu because he, I believe, his owners passed, and um, he was sporadically being kind of taken care of by the gardener. So I'm sure the gardener wasn't there very well, so very very much. So. Um, and he um, he had he doesn't know he can fly. Um, he had a um, inflated air sac um, that needed to be um, deflated um, due to an infection because I think he was just eating peanuts. But now he's been on a super healthy diet. He eats Harrison's pellets and apples and bananas. Um, uh, and snap peas and lettuce and carrots. And um, anyway, and so he does not need to be deflated anymore. Um, and um, he's super healthy. That's great. So he's not on any medication anymore or anything like that. So no. care is pretty straightforward. How big should a cage, how big a cage should uh, someone have for an Amazon like Oscar? Well, I I think a large cage would be best with rope perches. Um, he loves his heated perch. Um, and because he's an older bird and he has a tiny bit of arthritis. Um, uh, but because he likes to spend a lot of time in his cage and he's super chill bird, I think a, a, a larger cage is best. Um, and so this cage is... It's about three, three by two by three in, in height, but the, the, the um, bigger the cage, the better. Right. That's probably a good minimum size, two by three. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's really remarkably calm. And part of that, of course, is that we get mellower as we age, as humans too. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of toys does he like? What does he like to do? So he he loves to be in his cage. He loves his bell. Um, and he likes chewing cardboard. He likes chewing on wood. Um, and he uh, he loves to be close to people. He loves when people are around. Um, he loves music. Um, and... He, um, he likes his heated perch, like I said. He likes to be sprayed. He does this little dance. It's really cute when, he, when you spray him. So he likes water. Um, he also um, is very treat motivated, as you can see. And so I have trained him to step up onto a oh, nice. perch. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That didn't take very long. Um, 
And, and so he will step up. He likes to come out of his cage at least once a day to interact with you kind of at the table. But then other than that, he likes to go back and hang out in his cage. He's just a super chill, low maintenance parrot. He's also very quiet. So uh, we'll get to that in a minute. That's great. Um, you mentioned he really likes to be around people, and then you mentioned he likes he'll step up onto a rope perch. So I'm guessing he doesn't step up on hands, and he likes to be around, be close to people, but not on people. Is that kind of correct? Exactly. He likes to be close to people, and he likes to be hand fed lots of treats, and he likes to be talked to, but he doesn't necessarily need to be ride on your shoulder or need to be petted all the time. He um, he just likes to be near you. And so someone, you know, working from home or having him in the kitchen, you know, while you're going around in the house would be ideal. Um, when, when he can't see you, he'll say hello. And, and then you say hello back. And it's really cute. He just wants to know that you're there. Yeah. So, and, and occasionally. Birds will do contact calls like that, and if you respond while they're still low volume, they'll stay low volume, and if you yes. don't, they will get louder. Yes. <laughs> um, what What should his new family know about handling him or being with him? Um. So he uh, he loves when you're cleaning around the cage or vacuuming. Um, he gets really excited and comes out of his cage and he gets all puffy. Um, he He's really chill. Like I said, he's really quiet, um, low maintenance. He likes to say hello. Um, he's not afraid of people and pets at all. Um, but he can, he definitely can bite if fingers are, you know, shoved in front of his face and he does, they, they, they're not holding a treat. He finds that a little bit threatening. Um, and it, and he can be a little possessive over his cage. So um, if you put your hand in his cage and you have a treat, all good. If you shove your hand in his face, in his cage, you know, without a treat, he might bite you. So um, just to watch out for that. So so if someone shoved their hand in my, my face, I'd probably bite them too. That's, uh -huh. But um, yeah, Amazon, Amazons can bite and bite hard. And that's something for people to be aware of. Um, you know, it's not, not a sign that you did something horrible or that the bird hates you. It's just part of their nature. Mm -hmm. um, do we know if he's been around big dogs? And then I have another question for you, but that one just came in from, from our viewers. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I have two, um, like, poodles, standard poodles that um, come around and clean up after him when he mm -hmm. eats almonds and treats. They basically clean up the floor right below him, and um, and has he started to throw things out for them? <laughs> no, but I think he likes their company. Um, nice. And um, but yeah, so he he's great with dogs and a cat and my cat. I wouldn't recommend that because you never know the cat. Um, but right. he is super comfortable around. He basically rules. Um, so. Um, yeah, he's yeah. not great. Obvious, uh, that's great to hear. Obviously, ongoing supervision is needed, and I know you do this, Sophia, when you know parrots are around other animals, and it's important to call that out as we talk about it. It's not like they're they're left to their own devices. Right. So we talked about that Amazons can bite hard, um, and Amazon parrots can be loud in general, and Amazons can be among the loudest species. That might be mediated by the fact that he's an older bird. But yes. what's Oscar's volume like and how how much, how often, how loud? Um, I don't cover him. He just basically uses dark to go to sleep. Um, and he's just, he. I would say he just, maybe he might call out and want my attention a few minutes a day um or say hello a few minutes a day but other than that he's he's super quiet um and never at night never early in the morning never um just you know maybe about once a day when he sees me and I'm not 
you know, and he wants me to come and talk to him. You know, he loves, as you can see, nice. he loves to be talked to. So yeah, he, he's very attentive. He seems like a really sweet bird. Mm -hmm. So Sophia, what, what kind of person or household do you think would be a good landing spot for Oscar? I think a household with, um, you know, someone that's around and just would love a bird to talk to. Um, he would really love that and to, to hand feed treats. Um, and I think he would be a great apartment bird. Um, I think he'd be great with other pets. He'd be probably not with small children. Maybe not with small children, unless they know, you know, unless they know to only interact with him when they have a treat in their hand, you know, then, um, but just, I know children can be impulsive and, um, I'm a school psychologist, so I know. Um, and so we just, we want to make sure that, you know, children don't, you know, shove their hand in his face, but, um, other than that, he can be around anyone and he, but he just loves, like, I go to work, but my husband works from home and works at the table next to him. And he just, he's just super happy to have someone nearby. He doesn't need a lot other than that. So. Cool. So in our last few minutes, just like one, one cool fact or something that you would like potential adopters to know about Oscar. Um, just, yeah, that he loves the vacuum. He loves to be talked to, um, and just really likes music. And when he's excited, his, um, he gets puffy and his tail feathers, like now I'm talking to him, they kind of, yeah, they're spreading it. out. Yeah, yeah, they spread out. And, um, it just means he's, he's happy. Um, he's just a really sweet, beautiful bird. So nice. Sophia, thanks so much for sharing him, and hopefully someone watching is falling in love with Oscar right now. I know I am. Um, and we'll see you soon. We're going to Sounds move good. to our next bird, Kia, Kia the Senegal parrot, and we'll talk to Vincent about Kia. Hey, Hello. Vincent, I want to ask you some questions about Kia, um, but first remind our viewers that they can ask questions about Senegal parrots in general or Kia in particular in the Q&A. So let's start. Senegals are a little bit unusual. How about if you start by telling us a bit about Senegal birds? Well, Senegal birds are an African genus, Poicephalus. They are native to Western Central Africa um, from Senegal south to about Sierra Leone. Uh, they are fairly small. Uh, their body size is just a little bit bigger than a cockatiel. Um, but their beak is much bigger than a cockatiel. They they tend to be uh, beak aggressive at times. Um, they they have a reputation for being fairly quiet and fairly even keeled. Um, but they can, when they're going through um, their hormonal stage and their coming of age as a young adult, they can become uh, very aggressive and uh, bite people very hard. And that's how a lot of them come to us. Now, Kia is an older bird. She's past all of that. Um, and she's about 30 years old, which is about the lifespan. Um, she can live up to about maybe 40 years. So she has a little bit of time left in her. She looks very healthy. I you know she's 30 and that's average. That's an average lifespan for a Senegal in captivity, but they can live as much as 40. She looks really healthy. She um, does. Does she on meds or does she need any special care? She doesn't need any special care. Um, she has all of her toes and all of her feathers and all of her, you know, nails and everything. Um, and she she just looks very good, especially for her age. Um, she's not on any medical treatment of any kind. Um, and um, so far, so good. I'm, I'm seeing her really enjoy head scratches. Um, let's talk about how does she interact with people and does she step up? Does she seem frightened or likes attention? Well, she loves head scratches, it looks like. She likes attention. She tends to be, um, she, she likes people to pay attention to her uh, and she could even be a little bit bossy about that. Um, but she, she will step up. Um, she will step onto a hand or to a stick. Uh, sometimes she's standoffish about it. 
and um, she wants her space and you just have to respect that and work through it and come back in a few minutes. Um, but she is, um, she's very good with people. She doesn't show any jealousy when she's dealing with multiple people at one time so far. And she um, is, is attentive and quiet. And um, you can see she likes chewing on balsa wood. Yeah. Fun stuff. But, um, so we we don't see her cage super well. How big a cage should should a Kia like her have? And um, anything besides rope perches and maybe flat perches to accommodate for her uh, for her years? Um, there, she's in a cage. It's a little bit smaller than most Senegals would be in. It's about twenty four inches by twenty two inches. Um, I would usually recommend about 24 by about 36 but um she's older and she's just not very active and she prefers the the smaller space um, she, has, she has a wooden flat a few flat wooden perches um i think you can see one in one of the videos i made but um she has uh cotton cotton perches and manzanita Nice. Oh, yeah, there's a nice flat perch yeah, right on cue. Like and and a good sized grape that's probably as big as her skull. Yeah. Um so so I've seen her eating nutriberries and some fruit. Um what's what what's her diet like? She's on a good diet. She eats a, a few types of healthy pellets. Uh she she likes carrots a lot, uh likes uh broccoli and leafy greens. Um, she likes grapes and bananas. Uh, she will eat nutri cakes and occasionally seed mix. Um, she likes to take safflower seeds out of my hand as as a treat. Nice. Do we know if she's been around pets or around human children? Uh, Kia's previous owner, who was a, a longtime Mikaboo volunteer, um, had another Senegal parrot and so she lived you know close to him and I believe he also had cats too um Kia sometimes meows so she she's obviously been around cats um I I don't have any other any other types of animals but I do have eight other poicephalus here and she likes to be close to them and visit with them but she tends to shy away from direct contact. Um, there could be a disconnect between what level of, of aggression the you know, the, the different ones are showing and she just doesn't want to be want to have any part of that. Just wants to be mellow. Boy, she's really sweet. Um, let's see, I I think we talked about this, but it might have slipped by. Does she step up um, to hand her onto a uh, perch? She does step onto a hand or onto a wooden stick. Um, once in a while, she'll get standoffish about it. And I don't know if she's had bad experiences or what, but um, she doesn't like people to sneak up on her. And um, sometimes she just, just doesn't want to step up. And usually all she needs is a couple of minutes of quiet and she's fine. Nice. Um, we were just talking with the Amazon parrots can be loud. Senegals are not known as the loudest parrots, but they can, some Senegals are pretty loud birds. What about Kia? They can, they can be pretty loud. Um, Kia so far has been extremely quiet. Uh, she makes little fluttering sounds and, um, occasionally makes little people sounds and whistles. Um, but for the most part, she is just quiet. I think the fact that she's older, um, she's just more mellow now. I understand that she was a little bit more uh, vocal and aggressive in her younger days. As, but, as were we all. I mean, yeah. <laughs> think that's fair yeah. to say. So what kind of person would make a good landing spot for Kia? Um, she needs to go to a probably a home that's fairly quiet. I think if there's a bunch of activity, she might 
she might get nervous. I think she'd prefer, you know, maybe one or two, maybe three people, um, not not much more than that. Um, I think uh, she'd like someone who can spend a lot of time with her. Uh, she likes looking out the window. She uh, she'd like a big window with something scenic outside that she can watch. Um, and people who will be patient with her um, and give her the space that she needs when she needs it. That, that sounds really good. You know, we didn't mention how she came to Mikabu. I just want to add that she is, we're, th we're three for three thus far, birds who outlived their owners. Um, yeah. Her previous owner was a Mikabu volunteer who sadly passed last year. Yeah. Um, so in our last few minutes, Vincent, what else would you want potential adopters to know about Kia? She seems like a really sweet bird and, and very nice and easy going and really pretty. Um, she, I, I've had her since October, so I'm still getting to know all the nuances of her, but, um, she, she has times where she's, like I said, she's a little bit standoffish and I don't fully understand what that is but i do understand how to deal with it which is to give her the space that she needs at, at, in those uh situations um nice. she's very good with people and um kind of naturally curious um about about new things but also in a very mellow sort of way i think she shows her age um her owner told us that she used to be much more aggressive in her younger days, and and she's just not anymore. I see no evidence that that's going to come back. All right. Well, as we wrap up, uh, you mentioned something that I think is is really worth touching on. You said, you know, I've only, I've had her since October, so I'm still getting to know her. And it takes a while for parrots to open up. They really teach us patience as you know, it it takes a while sometimes to establish a strong bond and for them to feel safe with us. That's absolutely worth repeating. The the Senegal We're... tend to um, go through, and the, the Poicephalus in general go through a honeymoon period when they move to a new house, or they can. So I, I want to make sure that she's over her honeymoon period. And okay, what what else does she have to show us? And she seems to be over that. And this, this is this is her true personality that we're seeing here. Nice. We're going to move on to another member of the Poicephalus family. So as we switch to Sarah and Professor Lollipop, Vincent, since you're our Poicephalus coordinator, I want to keep you on the line for a minute. Um, Professor Lollipop is the beautiful Cape parrot that we see on top of his door. And... Uh, Again, the reminder, if you have questions about Cape Parrots or about Professor Lollipop, who's getting his head scritched, you can ask them in the Q&A. So, Vincent, how about if you start by telling us a little about Cape Parrots? They're kind of an unusual species to see in people's homes. Okay. Um, Cape Parrots are, again, like, like the Senegals, they are Poicephalus. Uh, they are native uh, more to southwestern Africa, um, as far as as far down as far south as the country of South Africa. Um, Cape parrots are significantly larger than the other Poicephalus. Uh, they are closer to the size of an of an African timna, or a uh, you know timna Af African gray, or a maybe a lilac crowned Amazon. Um, the Cape parrot species was split into two species. One of those has two subspecies. Um, this is a little bit confusing, but most of the quote unquote Cape parrots in captivity today, um, after the split, they were not defined as Cape parrots. Their name was changed to gray headed parrots. So a purist on taxonomy might might call us and say that that technically yes, um, lollipop is a is not a cape but a brown head. That's technically correct, but the the pet industry is still calling them all capes, and that's what she was known as when when she was bought, and that's what the surrender gave gave her to us as. 
So, um, so that's what we still call her. Uh, we know that she's a female by the orange spot on top of her head. Got it. So we're sometimes it takes uh, you know DNA testing to know a bird's gender, but some birds are dimorphic enough that we can tell. How yeah. old is Professor Lollipop? And oh. I will hand off to Sarah for the remaining questions. Cool. I Hi, hope. <laughs> Hi, this is Sarah. Um, hey, got Sarah. A, got a, a triple act today. Um, Benny's the uh, post apples expert. Um, Robin and I are here today uh, presenting Professor Lollipop. Um, I'm, yeah. fostering, I'm fostering her right now. Uh, she is 23 years old, and we know pretty accurately she hatched June 2001. Her owner gave us a lot of information about her. So um, that's great. Because, we don't. Yeah, we don't normally have such specific that? information about when they were, when they hatched, but we're very confident exactly. about that age. Yeah. Um, do we? How old? How old do Cape parrots live? You know, is she an older bird, a middle-aged bird, a young bird? She's not that old, really. Um, I mean, their life expectancy is pretty similar to African greys. You know, something in the region of forty to fifty plus years with good care and good diet could even be a little bit more. Um, so yeah, I mean, twenty three is not that old, relatively speaking. She could easily have another twenty, twenty or to thirty years. Um, again, the good care and the good diet is key to that. Um, keeping keeping their diet healthy um, is kind of pivotal to making sure that they're able to reach their full life expectancy. So before we talk about diet, um, how did she come to Mikabu? Lollipop came to Mikabu pretty recently due to change in her owner's health. Um, she's had a really great home. She had a very loving owner um, for her whole life, um, right up until this year. Um, the owner had actually reached out to us last year, just thinking about Planning ahead for the future, um, you know, he was aware that, you know, parrots often outlive their families and um, being responsible and thinking about what should happen in the event that he wasn't around anymore. He had reached out to inquire with us about how that process can work. If you're making arrangements, we were talking to him. And then um, earlier this year, unfortunately, he had some health changes, which uh, accelerated that conversation somewhat. And um March 19th, um, there were two birds. Um, Lollipop was living with an African grey as well. And we went along to pick them both up and take them into the Kaboo's care. Um, but yeah, um, Lollipop had one owner this whole time and it was a, a really great situation. You can see she's got a beautiful stainless steel cage, which is a really, nice. um, yeah, it's a really good size for her. Um, it's her original big. cage. Uh, it is approximately 32 inches wide. Um, it's a really nice, large animal environment cage. Um, it's got the play top on top, which Lollipop likes to go and chomp on some toys on top of. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a really good size for her. And obviously we're hoping that it would stay with her in a future home. Right. Right. Now, when, meaning that when someone adopts, they have the option to buy that cage. Stainless steel cages, by the way, um, don't often come up used and they're, they're very expensive new and they are far and away the best, easiest to clean. They don't rust uh, for birds. So that's kind of a nice thing that she's she's got one. Um, how's her health? Her health is really good. Um, she's only had one incident in her whole history, which was one of her feet. She had a, a minor issue she was treated for on one of her feet that was... Um, you know, no, nothing serious, um, just at the skin level. Um, so that was a, a one-off treatment at the animal hospital. And uh, she's completely fine. She enjoys a variety of perches to keep her feet comfortable. Um, she's got some rope perches and some wood perches. And she climbs around. Her grip seems good. Um, she doesn't normally fly. Um, but she will if she's spooked by something. So um, she's capable of it, and you need to be careful about that, obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean, health-wise, she's um, active and inquisitive. She enjoys moving and climbing around. She loves chewing on her wooden blocks. Uh, she needs a healthy supply of wooden blocks. That's really one of her, you know, 
beyond um, attention and um, nice fresh food and good pellets. Uh, wooden blocks are pretty high up her wish list because she gets through them at a decent rate. So why would you treat them? That's, what uh, what other toys what other toys does she like to play with? Uh, really, lots of wooden blocks. <laughs> okay, wood, wood, wood blocks are, are the thing. <laughs> they are. She she will pick up. Um, she chews them off of the toys, and then she'll retrieve the parts that she's managed to remove, and then she'll pick them up as put toys and work on them. So nice. once it's injected off of the toy, um, she'll go down and grab them from the bottom, or you know, there's a couple of them up there which. Um, have retired from hanging on the toy. They're now put toys living on the top and she's still working on them. She really enjoys the blocks that come with grooves in them that gives them some texture and some shape on the outside. So um, we've given her different types and the smooth ones are sort of second rate. You know, they're fine. They're better than nothing. But the ones with the grooves are the ones that she likes to pick up. I think it's just more interesting to her to to nibble on them and feel around all of the grooves. Yeah. Um, so it sound, I think her previous owner was male and she clearly does well with, with Robin right now. So it seems like she does well with both men and women. Does she step up? Uh, she prefers not to. Um, okay. she, she'll she step up on a rope perch if you really insist, um, but she prefers to step up right off of it again so um you know when we transported her into a carrier when we picked her up last month um even her owner you know spent about five minutes getting her to hop onto her perches and then she jumped right off again she doesn't really uh you know she was always described as being just a little bit aloof you know she enjoys attention and she wants company and scritches and treats but she's not really the kind of bird that enjoys being on a person so she's not going to want to shoulder surf with you. She's not that interested in being on your arms or your hands, um, but she does want your attention and she'll contact call if you uh, walk away and you stop giving her attention. Um, but yeah, the um, the other bird in the home was more of the bird that would be held um, or go on the owner's shoulder. And she was just very happy being on her play stand or on top of her cage and having the ambient company. Right. Ambi ambient companionship is an important thing for all birds. And for some birds, that's really what they prefer. Um, do we know if she's been around children and what would uh, a family that adopted her, what should they know about handling and being with, with her? That's a great question. Um, there were no children in the home. I don't think she spent a lot of time around children. Um I mean, I, I don't think it would be an issue as long as children understand that, you know, she, some, she, she's an animal that you can interact with by talking and giving attention um, or maybe handing a treat over gently and slowly, but, you know, no sudden movements. Um, and yeah, I, I wouldn't push the issue of trying to insist that she step up for you. I know a lot of people instinctively just want to try and pick up an animal and hold them. Um, and that's what we do with a lot of pets. Not a good animals. idea. I would not, yeah, consent's important with parrots. You don't want to break their trust. Um, if she prefers yeah. to do her own thing, just have your ambient company, then, you know, that's something you have to respect if you want to be successful. So, um, yeah, she, I think, you know, she, I think she'd be fine with people being around. Um, but yeah, if you're going to persist in trying to get her to do what you want, then, um, you know, She'll uh, she'll express her needs in different ways, including using her beak, probably. But only a yeah, bird, yep. you know. Yeah. Um, how loud, as parrots go, how loud would you say Professor Lollipop is, and how often? Um, she's quiet when she's happy and has people around. Um, she will be vocal if um, it's early in the morning and she's ready for breakfast, and um, you're late with uh, mm -hmm. starting the day. And she'll also get vocal if you've been around hanging out with her and then you need to go somewhere. She'll contact call after you. And, you know, she doesn't like being alone. Um, so she is quite loud when she contact calls. It's quite a loud call. I would describe it as moderately piercing. Um, but it's not something she does all day. It's not continuous. Um, when she's not doing that, she's really pretty quiet. Um, she does vocalize um, with sort of human sounds. She'll make little hmm noises. 
as though she's thinking or asking questions. Uh, and she also says, hi, that's the one English um, word that she's picked up to mimic is going hi, which she uses in context. If you walk in and say hello to her or you've just appeared, um, quite often you'll get a hi in the first 20 seconds. Um, so she's incredibly polite, really. Yeah. So in our, our last few minutes, what one thing would you want potential adopters to know about Professor Lollipop? Um, she's really been super well loved. Um, it's clear that she's very confident around people. Um, you know, I think as long as you respect her preference not to be on people and not to be held, um, I think you could work with her to pick her up on a rope perch if you needed to transport her from place to place. Um, she really enjoys foraging and wooden toys. Um, I think keeping her busy with lots of foraging opportunities, um, is a nice way to keep her uh, happy and engaged if you have to go somewhere or be somewhere else. She should be in a space where you're going to spend most of your time. So maybe your living room or your office if you work from home. Um, and um, I mean, she's really, she's been so well cared for. We're very much hoping to find her that next great home that is going to continue to maintain her in the style to which she's been accustomed. Here, here's to that. Thanks so much, Sarah, sharing Professor and. Robin sharing Professor Lollipop with us. We're going to go to a much smaller bird now, uh, a lovebird named Lulu. Hey, Alex. How are you hey, doing? Hey, Jonathan. I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm doing well. We are waiting to get your video going. I, I know that team is working on that. Um, meanwhile, let, I'll remind people they can ask questions about lovebirds or about Lulu in the Q&A. Um, there we go. How old is Lulu? There's Lulu. Well, she's young. She could be, oh, a year or two years old. Uh, we don't know because she was found on the um, Land's End Trail in San Francisco by somebody visiting. Wow. And That's I'm guessing her owner lucky. never, her, yeah, her owner never, never came forward. And so she's looking for a home. Yeah, that would be correct. So a year, maybe two years old, how long do lovebirds live? They, 12 to 15, they could easily, with good diet and attention, live to be 20 or 22. Um, so she's early on in her lifespan, most likely. Does she, um, well, since we're looking at her cage, how big a cage does a lovebird need? Uh, a single lovebird should have at least uh, 24 by 24 um, to give them an op. Really, the wider, the better, because they like to fly back and forth. Um, if you have two, let's say at least 30 inches wide. Right, I can see that's a nice wide cage. Uh, um, do they mm -hmm. like to be in Paris? I, I imagine I mean, there's, there's, you know, they're called lovebirds. Some of them do. Most of them are certainly interested in other birds, in my experience. And uh, Lulu certainly is. She wants to go. She was in there checking out the budgies earlier. And um, some of them, some lovebirds are okay singly. But really, I wouldn't recommend it for them if you're not a person who's home all the time. Right, right. Because so they're going to be lonely. Be it would be good for her adopter to either already have a lovebird or consider adopting her and another lovebird from Mikabu. Um, another lovebird or even another bird as a friend. Yes. Right. Right. Um, so she seems to be very comfortable interacting with people stepping up. Yes. Does she step up? She likes to climb on people. Yes. Does she yes. step up? She'll get on the hands, arms, heads, She's not a big shoulder surfer, but she definitely, she's not afraid of hands. She likes to get under my hand when working. Uh, typing makes it hard to do any sort of work at home stuff at the keyboard and mousing. See, yeah, tons of scratches, <laughs> um, which is adorable and distracting. Sure. Sure. Bird introduced, bird induced illiteracy via <laughs> the like keyboard is uh, you stop kind of problem. typing. Well, I can only type with, you know, three fingers. I'm busy. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, do we know if she's been around children or other pets besides birds? We don't. Okay. We actually, that's me. no. But she so, seems really good with humans. Um, in general, I would consider lovebirds risky with children, certainly little kids. Right. They, they can be surprisingly rowdy for little birds, can't they? They can, and it's that beak. You know, finches have little beaks. Cockatiel beaks are smaller than a lovebird's beak. And I learned that myself the hard way. I was like, wow, the lovebird bites harder than the cockatiel. You'd think the bigger bird, but they can be sneaky that way. They look harmless and adorable because they're about two inches tall, but they get their, their point across. Yes, they do. Yeah, that's endearing. That, that's a fib. <laughs> um, so what's her diet like? What's a good diet for a leopard, and is her diet a good one? So right now she's on nutrient cakes, which is a good diet. It's better than generic seed. It's a pellet and seed mix, and it has other nutrients with it. She is offered fruits and vegetables, but she's not so interested in them unless I've gotten a nibble of it myself she'll sneak up and she'll like she'll get a piece out of the bowl take a bite and then shake her head like crazy like yeah no not that no nah, so that's going to be an ongoing process eat a little bit try and convince her to eat some make it interesting um popcorn although she shouldn't have salted buttered popcorn plain popcorn once in a great while I think it's the texture that's fun. Yeah, yeah, and and our birds love corn and popcorn too. We we sometimes pop some some plain popcorn in an air popper, and they yes. sure do love it. it. Me too. So yeah. Yeah. Um, Lots. So what kind there. of toys? To, sorry. There's some nesting you can see her. She wants to burrow. Uh, shirt right. sleeves underneath scarves and that's something to be aware of um it, it can be hormonal. not so great hormone yeah it can it can lead to birds thinking that it's time to breed which isn't a healthy situation we talk about that in our basic bird class quite a lot so yes um what we didn't touch on toys she's much smaller than some of the other birds we looked at what kind of toys does she like so she, one of her favorite toys was earlier on in the video, and it looks like one of those little cat balls with a bell inside that she likes oh, yeah. tossing that around. Um, she's really more interested in investigating things than just chewing or shredding things. So her day starts where she hops out, comes out there's of her the ball. Bed. Yes, there's the ball. And, um, She'll get up and come out from her room when she has a smaller sleeping cage and she visits the office, her room, and then the room where the budgies are. And Got so it. I think that's also her wanting some bird companionship. Sounds like it. And we met, we called it a, a cat ball bell. I just yeah. want to make the, make the point that it's important that birds don't play with the toys that your dog or cat plays with because yes, dog and I'm... cat saliva can be very toxic for them. So although we're calling it a cat toy, it's not a toy for that was it's, used by cats. Yes, it's where you find it potentially yeah. size wise. In um, the in the pet store, yeah, that's yes. where you'd find it. So in our last few minutes, Alex, what else would you want a potential adopter to know about Lulu? That she's super active. She loves to get around. Um, the hand thing was an improvement. She didn't start that way. She would bite. And now she's happy with them. So I think she's going to get the more socialized opportunity she has, the more adore, you know, cuddly she'll be. Um, she's so friendly. Really, I'll miss the, uh, the big eyes. And... Um, 
I feel bad that she'll have to start over with someone else. But she does need a friend, so I hope she also gets that. Here's to that. Thanks so much for sharing Lulu with us, Alex. Oh, yeah. And I'd like to like to thank all of you for attending McAboo's April Virtual Adoption Fair. If you have any ideas or comments on how we can improve for next time, please include it in the event survey. You'll get a link for that when you exit. Um, we appreciate your feedback or send us an email because we always want to get better. There are a lot of birds in our care who need their forever homes. So if you fell in one of, in love with one of the birds today, please contact us. But if nobody here seemed like the right bird, take a look at the others on our website. There are lots of good birds there. And please remember, we are a fully donation-funded nonprofit. You can support this work of Parrot Rescue at mikaboo.org slash donate or paypal.me slash mikaboo. We do these virtual adoption fairs and other events regularly. We're planning another one for May 18th. Uh, check in about these and other events on the events page on mikaboo.org. I'd like to say huge thank yous to all of our foster parents and their birds for being brave enough to come on the, uh, the fair today and showing up. And to all the volunteers who provided technical support for this event and all the volunteers who helped take care of these birds and keep things running smoothly. Thank you all. And thank you for being here. Let's roll credits and we'll see you next month.